Have you ever looked at a pile of fluff and thought this would make the perfect sweater? Maybe oversized, so cozy and warm, maybe in shades of gray. I decided to dye it, spin it, knit it, and I'm gonna show you this whole process. Now, it will be a version of this. I'll tell you right now that this does not turn out exactly as I envision, but we'll go through it step by step and you will see the things that worked and the things that did not work. I am using Blueface Lester wool and I'm weighing it out, getting it prepped to dye. And my thought with the dyeing process is that I'm just going to do it in this large vat. I want it all to be gray, but I want there to be a lot of variation in it. So I'm starting with just a um, fairly thin gray wash on all of my fiber. And then I'm going in with a more potent dye and just layering it on certain parts of the fiber. Now I have it separated into two bundles. And really I'm trying to make sure that it's saturated all the way through the fiber. You don't want the middle of it being white still. I want it all gray. And then I'm going to layer on those darker colors. And that's really just what I'm going with, step by step, laying it on and letting it all um, take and soak in before I can rinse it or well, cool it first and rinse it off and get it prepped for spinning. fiber prep stage there's a lot of things you can do and I like to keep it in braids when I am not using it just so it doesn't get tangled or messed up and I can easily put it aside I've got a lot of little people and critters around this house and I like it kept in braids um, just to protect it a little bit but when it is time to spin I separate each braid into four pieces and I just roll them up into these little nests I like to alternate between the two braids one came out a little darker than the other which is not uncommon when you have it just in a big vat it's very unpredictable but I knew that I'm good with it I just wanted again shades of gray which is what I got so I'm just going to alternate between the lighter and the darker um, of each of these little nests <laughs> When it comes time to spin, I'm really aiming to make a thicker yarn. My go-to is a little thinner and it really takes effort to keep going thicker. So all throughout this spinning process, I'm trying to remind myself to keep it thicker to end up with a thicker yarn in the end. You can see uh, this spinning wheel here is my prototype for the Plyology spinning wheel. I filmed this part 
quite some time ago, back before I had gotten my final uh, Plyology wheel and they have made a ton of improvements and I just love my new one. Uh, but this was back when I was just trying out a prototype and I made a little video about that prototype if you wanna check it out or wanna know more information about this wheel. But it was still working great um, and I used it a lot and I've used my new wheel a lot as well. So I'm just going through this, spinning the single, and then I am chain plying this single into my final plied yarn. So all in all, things have been going really well so far, no concerns. However, you may notice that all of this resulted in two large cakes. And at this point, I really should have said, hmm, I wonder what my yardage is. 
But that is like my least favorite part of spinning and I always just kind of go with it. And I was thinking about how many grams I had um, and it just didn't quite translate exactly the way I expected it to. So I decided to go with um, this cocoon style of sweater is kind of my initial inspiration, which is you basically just make this giant rectangle and you're gonna sew together the ends. And then if you want it longer, you add sleeves on the sides. A very, very simple construction. Don't really need a pattern for it. But as I'm going, I am realizing there is no way that this rectangle is going to be the size I need it to be. It's just going to be small like a shrub and I was really going for this large oversized look. So at this point, I put it away for a while and this is one of the reasons this video has taken a long time to come out because I needed a break to think about what I wanted to do, not having enough yardage for my original plan. So what I came to is that I decided to pull in a bunch of other odd hand spun bits that I had and stripe it. And for this new design, I decided to go with uh, Boylan Network's Reluctant Homeschooler pattern, which is one that I had. Same kind of oversized large bit, but I decided to stripe it with these other colors um, to make a whole new garment. So this is the final sweater. It has stripes throughout. I used a lot of that gray and I used the gray for the edging, but I also kind of feature these other colors. And I think it is a super fun way to use the these skeins that I only had like one skein of, only like 100 grams, not too much, um, but it was able to pull them all together and they have that neutral color as the base to make a really different sort of sweater. So that is all. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.